Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to factor a trinomial. Now, when factoring a trinomial, the main important thing we want to do is see if we can factor out our greatest common factor. Now, remember, our greatest common factor is going to be a factor that we can factor out of each one of these terms. Now, each one of these terms we call a monomial. And this is called a trinomial because there's three separate of them. So when factoring out your GCF, you've got to make sure that that number or variable goes into all three of our terms. So if I look at my n here, I have an n squared, an n, but the sense of 600, this term does not have an n, I can't factor an n out of this trinomial. I next look at my numbers, and I'm going to look at the smallest number out of these three to see which factors would um, go into all three of these. And since these are all even numbers, I know 2 is a common factor. Um, and I also started looking at these, I do a little math in my head, and I noticed that these are also all divisible by 3. But when I start doing my math, I want to see what is the largest number that goes into all three of them. And I ended up getting that answer to be 6. So I can evenly divide 6 into all three of these, but that's going to be the largest number that I can do that with. So what I'll do is I'm going to factor out a 6, and when I do that, I'm left with a 9n squared plus... Uh, 60, 60, um, 60n plus 100. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor, and I'm going to use a little box method to, you, to show you my factoring. One thing we need to remember when we're dealing with factoring is we need to understand that when factoring a trinomial, especially in the quadratic type, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. So when I'm going to be doing my factoring, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a little, a little diagram here, and I'm going to multiply my a times my c, and then, and then to find my middle term, I'm going to uh, add it up into a times c, and then to uh, a times c. I'm trying to think here. Hold on one second. I understand it. And then what two numbers multiply to give you c? I would then add up to give you b. So then it's going to be a times c, and then b will be my middle term. There you go. Little flutter here. Okay. So all it is is what two numbers multiply to give you or what two numbers multiply to give you a times c, but then add up to give you our b term. So our b term here is going to be 60, and our a times c term is going to be 900. So what again, I'll say this one more time to make sure, what two numbers multiply to give us 900, but add to give us 60? Now if you think of big numbers, and you kind of actually cancel out the zeros, um, you'd have what two numbers you know, add up to give you uh, uh, 6, but then multiply to give you, you know, 90. And what we notice is, or add up to give you 6, but multiply to give you 90, what we see here is if we have uh, 30 plus 30, those two numbers add up to give me 60, and they multiply to give me 900. So that's going to be my two terms. Another thing that I notice when I'm looking at this is I also notice that this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. And that's something very important for you guys to understand, because I can automatically tell you I already know what the answer is by looking at those perfect squares. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you the long way, just so you guys can see so you have practice with it. So what we're going to do is, since I noticed that 900 is my 8 times my C, um, 30, 30, and 60, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite now my middle terms that I just figured out. So I'm going to have 6, parentheses, so I have 9n squared. Rather than writing 60n, I'm going to write 30n plus 30n. 30n plus 30n would give you 60n, right? I got the 30 plus the 30 from right here plus 100. Okay, so all I really did was by using this diamond method, what I was able, I was able to determine what I could rewrite my two middle terms are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor all of this inside here, I'm going to factor by grouping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the first two terms and then group the last two terms. Now what I'm going to do from here is factor out, factor out what I can for my first two terms. Well here I can factor out a 3n. When I factor out a 3n, I'm just left with another 3n plus 10. Here, what can I factor out? Well, I can factor out a positive 10. And then what I'm left over with is going to be, again, a 3n plus 10. Now, what I notice 
say, what can I factor out out of these two terms? Well, I can both factor out. You notice that 3m plus 10 and 3s plus 10 are the same. So now I can factor that out. So my final answer is going to be 6n times uh, a 3n plus 10 factored out times a 3n plus 10. Well, 3n plus 10, let's put a parentheses around it. 3n plus 10 times 3n plus 10 is 3n plus, or 3n plus 10 squared. So let's have 3n plus 10 squared. Oops. And again, I just used the brackets so just so I wouldn't get you guys too confused um, by leaving it there. But, you know, I factor out my 6, and I just want to use brackets so you guys weren't seeing so many parentheses. But your final answer would be 6 times 3n plus 10 squared. And that's it.